This is a little experimental scene that I made after having a conversation with Apsu and Cryptoid in my Discord channel. The issue was how could you have all the details of a character controller while not interfering with the rigid body and the Unity physics. First, let me just show you. Here we have a player represented by a cube. We can walk and obviously you cannot go through a wall. You can also jump and move around the platform. I have infinite double jumps, that's just not part of the experiment, so don't mind that. But you have a character, the platform, and the wall working pretty well. Now let me show you player two. I'm gonna turn player one off, turn on player two and play. Okay, if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that we have the overlap between the player and the wall, and this weird twitchy movement. The main difference is that player 1 uses add force to move, while for player 2 I'm directly changing the transform values. Now you might say that's something really obvious, but what makes player 1 special is that if I look at the code, so we're using add force to move, but adding force usually involves momentum and slowing down or speeding up over time, which may not be ideal for a character controller because you might have sudden dash or sudden stops and turns, detailed movement basically. So for this experiment, the point is, instead of using the default add force, we're using this force mode, velocity change, which is used for making instant velocity changes. So instant movement is pretty easy. Another important point is having instant stops. Assuming you want to stop as soon as you let go of the key, we add the exact opposite amount of force to make you stop. Again, for instant velocity changes, we're using this mode. And the same concept applies to clamping down on maximum speed. If you somehow happen to go over maximum speed, the exact amount of difference is subtracted from your velocity. Jump is pretty straightforward, you're just adding an upward force. If you're confused about directions, force, and vectors, check out my other video on vector basics. Let me go back and play again. Make sure that I'm using player one. Because another detail that you wanna pay attention to is the settings for your rigid body. If I turn this to discrete and have some insane maximum speed, 1000, you're just gonna go through walls. Usually I would recommend using continuous. So if I test it again with 1000 speed, okay, we don't go through walls anymore. But a lot of these options will depend on what kind of game you're building. But anyways, this experiment is about understanding that even if you just use add force, you can still have all the movement details. Another important variable here is friction. Right now, player and wall have zero friction, but if they did, see what happens. I can use the friction to stay in midair against the wall. Let me show it to you again. Okay, I jump and continuously add force to the player against the wall. And by having friction, you're kind of stuck there. If I let go, you fall. So all these little physics settings can make a big difference. And oftentimes I see people directly changing the transform values to bypass that. I do it myself in my current project. But after this experiment, I might decide to get rid of a big chunk of my manual collision detection code. Right now, this is just an experiment and nothing's decided yet. But I think this is an interesting topic. How do you put together the character controller with so many little details in movement? How do you put it together with the rigid body and the rest of Unity physics? How do you make the player interact correctly with everything that's inside your game? I see a lot of people still debating on online forums on how to put together a character controller. And I'm thinking about doing more experiments and maybe turn this into a complete 3D character controller because right now we're just moving around on a single axis. And eventually I might have a 3D character controller where the code is not interfering at all with the default Unity physics. I think it could be a fun experiment and possibly add value to the whole discussion. Okay, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. You can reach me on my Discord server. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.